Welcome. In this lesson, I'm going to show you eight variations of common chord progressions on the guitar. This is the fourth and final lesson in a short series about common chord progressions and how to work on them, understand the theory of them, and practice them on the guitar. There's a link to a playlist of the full series in the description. The first lesson in this series covered two chord chord progressions. The second lesson covered three chord chord progressions. The next lesson covered four chord chord progressions and more. And then this lesson is going to cover some of those popular chord progressions, those common chord progressions, but variations on them. This is a very important lesson here because we wanna know how we can manipulate these common chord progressions to get all kinds of variety and variations. And there's so much variety that we can use here and that is used in music, it's worth kind of e expressing it this way. Instead of saying, here are eight more common chord progressions, I wanna say, let's grab from that pool that we already made, we did 20, chord progressions in those last three videos. Let's list those all out and then grab a couple of those and say, hey, here's a common version of that that's so closely related, it's worth saying that they're basically the same progression with something changed. You'll see what I mean as we go through it. It's gonna be really fun. Before we do that, if you wanna follow along and un understand the theory of this stuff and have a bunch of chord shapes to use through various keys to play with these chord progressions, grab my free chord theory chord chart. It's called Chords with Color, and it's super handy if you're into that kind of thing, if you need or want a resource that shows chord diagrams, the chord numbers it, through five different keys, chord tone uh, numbers within the chords themselves. I haven't seen any other chord chart that lists the actual theory chord tone numbers of the chords with the diagrams, but that's always how I write them out. So I made that chart to include that as well. So if you wanna follow along and work on these, grab that. Let's dive in and recap on the 20 chord progressions that we covered in the last three videos. If you didn't watch those, that's fine. You just get to have a list of them here, and then we'll talk about how we can manipulate them. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and stuff like that. If you're into that, and if you're new here, please subscribe. So here are the 20 chord progressions that we went over in the last three videos. If you wanna go check those videos out, there's a link in the description to a playlist of the series, but we're gonna list them out right here. So the first chord progression was one and two just one to two and back and forth. The next chord progression was one and four. These first six are just two chord chord progressions. The next chord progression was one and six. This is the hallelujah progression, um, the uh, Leonard Cohen tune and Jeff Buckley version. The next uh, progression I sometimes call the Bo Diddley progression. It's one flat seven major and one back and forth between those two. The next progression is one, five, five, one. The next progression is two five, um, often used with sevens to uh, minor seven and dominant seven, but it can be done with triads as well. So those are all the two chord chord progressions. Moving on to three chord chord progressions, we have one, four, five, four. This is the Louie Louie or wild thing chord progression. The next chord progression with three chords is just the simple or basic 12 bar blues. The next chord progression is two, five, one, very common uh, chord progression in functional harmony using three chords. The next is minor one, minor four, and then dominant seven, five. So minor one, minor four, and then five, dominant seven. I talked about how this is used by Django Reinhardt in his song Minor Swing and Billie Eilish in Tough Guy, same progression. The next progression of our three chord chord progressions is one flat seven major, flat six major, back to flat seven major. This is the all along the watchtower progression. Uh, the last progression out of the three chord chord progressions is two, four, one. I talked about how this is less in functional harmony and more kind of pop songwriting progression, two, four, one. Moving on to the four chord chord progressions and beyond, the first one is the do up progression or the fifties progression, one, six, four, five. The next progression is one, six, two, Five. The next progression is the infamous one, five, six, four that everyone thinks of as every pop song using all the time, which is kind of true. Um, the next progression is one, three, four, five. That's the let's get it on progression. The next progression is minor one, flat seven major, flat six major, and then five, often five as dominant seven. This is called the Andalusian cadence. Very haunting, very cool progression. The next progression is three, six, two, five. This is kind of 
diatonically following the circle of fourths in a key, three, six, two, five, very common in jazz tunes. The next one is a line cliche that is the Stairway to Heaven progression. This is minor one, and then one minor major seven, and then one minor seven, and then one minor six. Um, that's very cool. You can put that moving line on the top, in the middle, on the bottom. Uh, Stairway to Heaven progression used in a ton of other songs as well. And the final progression that we covered, which is kind of a bonus progression because it includes so many more chords than four, uh, it is the Canon in D progression or the Canon progression. That's one, five, six, three, four, one, four, five. That's a mouthful and it's hard to remember, but it's very audibly uh, recognizable. It's the uh, Pachelbel's Canon progression, and I also talked about how it's used by uh, Green Day in their song Basket Case from the 90s, and uh, recently by the band Maroon 5 in their song Memories, which really just sounds like Canon and D. So what I want to do is grab a few of these and talk about how it's actually also very common to just tweak something about the progression. So right off the bat, I just want to say, if you're playing around with this stuff, you can change the quality of any of these chords and just see what you get. The quality is whether it's major, minor, dominant seven, diminished, that kind of thing. So if it's a major chord, Anywhere in the progression, try it as minor. If it's a minor chord, try it as major. Sometimes there's some very logical theory to where those um, different chord qualities come from, but that doesn't have to be, just experiment around. Um, so, so a lot of these progressions just have different qualities swapped. Here's an example of that. This is a progression I really love. If we take that progression, that very first one we talked about in the first lesson of this series, that is the one and two chord. So we have one to two, that's in C. Nice, lovely progression. If we take that two chord and we turn it into a half diminished chord. Oh, I, this is one of my favorite sounds ever. One, and then, that's just so kind of sweet and haunting. You get some like tasty chromaticism in there. Um, extra step that I really love about this progression. If you do an inversion of this, half diminished chord, a third inversion where the seven, the flat seven of the chord is on the bottom, you get C in the bass again. So if you use a shape like that, oh, this is so cool. You get C and then the two chord has half diminished, but with C in the, over C, with C in the bass. C stays in the bass. So let's also take that progression that's just the one and four chord, just a classic progression one and four. If I do that in, in C also, we could do this, sit here all day, play one and four and just feel good. Um, change the quality of either of those. Um, and let's change the four chord to minor. And then we get some of that chromaticism. This is actually called modal borrowing. It can be considered modal borrowing. I have a playlist about uh, modal mixture and modal borrowing. I'll put a link to that in the description. So that four chord minor, you can also make the one chord minor and the four chord minor. Now we're just playing in the minor key. So you see how I don't wanna say that these are different progressions and suddenly, hey, here's eight more progressions. Instead, uh, I wanna say, no, this is the one and four chord progression, but let's uh, have those um, options available to us that we can change the quality around. Uh, so again, let's do it in a different key because that's part of what I, I want to encourage you to do is just be able to do this stuff in, different, in a different key. What if, it's, what if it's an A minor? One, four, one, or if we do G major and C minor, one, minor four, one. Similarly, if we take that one, five, five, one progression and we play that for a sec, just to get it in our heads, where the five chord, it hangs out in the middle for twice as long as the one chord does. I just, I think it's just such a fun progression. But now we just, just turn it into minor. So the one chord is minor. We kept the five chord as dominant seven. Just turn the one into minor. So that's another kind of variation where we just look at the quality change. So another huge thing that you can do to get options and variety here is take any of those chord progressions and then add extensions to them. Start adding sevens, 
nines, 11s, 13s. If you don't know what that stuff means, I did some really thorough lessons on what the theory of extensions are how to, and how to add them to chords. I'll put links to those lessons in the description. And if you wanna know more about all kinds of stuff like that, I did a big uh, series on just chord theory from beginner to advanced. I'll put a link in the description to that as well. So, so this is huge though. If we can take any of these chords and just add um, color to them, add extensions. And that's why my chord theory chart that I talked about at the beginning is called chords with color. The whole kind of main premise of it is to give us the chords through a key and I'll do it in five different keys. There's five different keys in there. And then each one of those chords, what's the version of that chord if you add the nine? If you add the six and the nine, if you add the six, if you add the 11, if you add, you know, can we add all that stuff? So tons of just um, chord options with a lot of color in a very organized way. So the one and four progression that I talked about earlier in this series, and again, it doesn't matter if you watch those earlier lessons or not. Um, well, this is often played this way, C major and F major seven. Well, F major seven is, is, is uh, the four chord with the seven added. You could also add the nine to that. So. So it's worth understanding what if I add the seven or the nine or the 11 or the 13 or combinations of those, you know, what do we get? So the next chord progression that I want to talk about is just a minor two, five, one. So we talked about two, five, one um, on our original list. Two, five, one. If that's a minor two, five, one, well then we just think of the two, five, one, but coming from a minor key. So the one chord is minor or minor seven. And then the two chord has to be half diminished. So if we learn our chords through minor key, Keys and our chords through the harmonic minor scale. Um, I have videos on both of those things. I'll put links to those in the description. So the two chord of a minor key is half diminished. The five chord of a minor key, when borrowed from the harmonic minor scale, is dominant seven. So we have one, so two is half diminished, five is dominant seven. If we can add a flat 13 there. One, okay. Now if some of that is over your head, don't sweat that at all. And feel free to leave questions in the comments too. Just wanting to expose you to all of these different progressions. So if two five one is is one of our you know top most common progressions to learn, we need to, we want to work on the minor two five one as well. In fact, my next video is about the harmonic minor scale, and part of what I talk about there is why it's useful specifically for minor two five ones and for five chords that happen in minor keys. Okay, just a couple more progressions. That progression that was one, three, four, five, the let's get it on progression. Uh, well, it is so common to turn that three into a major instead of minor. This is just more example of just qualities changing, and that's why it's the same progression. One, three, four, five. That three being major is very common. Let's do that in C. One, three, if this was minor, one, So that's a really common variation of that. Um, that cr the Creeps song almost does it. It goes one, three major, four, and then four minor. So you see how you could take almost one of these common progressions that I have listed here and then take a little twist and turn at the end of it. And that's like what that Creep progression does. So we could go on and on with more variations, but I just wanna give you an idea. So if you want that resource to help follow along with this stuff and play around with the, these chord shapes, see all the chords within a key, the Roman numerals, all the extensions added, the colors, stuff like that, grab that free chord theory chord chart. There's a link in the description. We could go on and on about variations, but I wanted to just give you a taste of how we can just manipulate these common chord progressions, those first 20 that we listed at the beginning of the lesson, and just play around, especially if you're writing, if you're composing, um, have having kind of a set of those and then ways to start manipulating them to make them really personal for you, to make them feel more expressive and uh, more unique if that's what you want artistically in the moment or just things to explore creatively, um, I think that's really fun and really powerful. I didn't really mention how, uh, you know, how much just rhythm and time changes 
a progression as well. You could have the same exact chords, even the same key, change the time signature though, and the feel or the accent somewhere, or just the tempo, and it's um, very different. And that's, you know, that's really obvious, but you combine that with these other ways of manipulating the chord progression. So we have so many cool uh, harmonic options to play with. That's it for this short mini series on the 20 most common chord progressions, how to play with them on the guitar, and how to really understand the theory of them. If there are any chord progressions that you think I missed that should have made this list, put it in the comments. I would love to see that. If there are any songs that you recognize from any of these chord progressions we talked about in this lesson, throw that in the comments as well. Uh, I'm here every Tuesday with a new lesson. Looking forward to seeing you again soon in the next lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.